Welcome back to Take One. This is your host, Tom Paulo Sa, and this is actually part three of everything I watched at VIF. If you missed part one or part two, there is a playlist right here with every single part of the series, so you can click on it if you want. But now, on with the video. On the next day of VIF, which was October 3rd, I watched two movies, but totally unrelated, this was also the day when I met Bob Odenkirk, who, of course, is famous for playing the role of Saul Goodman in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Bob Odenkirk was at my university filming an upcoming TV show called The Straight Man, so yeah, not related to Viv at all, but I met one of my favorite actors of all time, so I thought I should just mention it. Now, the first movie that I saw on October 3rd was Corsage. Corsage is a fictional account of one year in the life of Empress Elizabeth of Austria. It is an Austrian film directed by Marie Kreutzer, and I thought this film was very good. Honestly, there is not much that I have to say about Corsage. You know, I thought Vicky Crapes was great as the film's protagonist, I thought the cinematography was very pretty, and I thought the production design and costumes were breathtaking. On top of that, I also really love the fact that this movie focuses on showing us Elizabeth of Austria not as a ruler or as a historical figure, but as a real human being with strengths, weaknesses, needs, and desires. So yeah, I like this movie. That said, I did think it was a bit slow at times, and I thought it was, at the end of the day, a bit unremarkable and unmemorable. If I were to give it a score out of 10, I would give it a 7 out of 10, which means I thought this film was very good. Now, the second movie that I watched on October 3rd was Triangle of Sadness. Triangle of Sadness is a dark comedy about a fashion model celebrity couple who join an eventful cruise for the super rich, and then, madness ensues. This is the newest film from director Ruben Ostland, who is famous for directing movies such as Force Majeure and The Square, and this is actually the film that won the Pound d'Or at this year's Cannes International Film Festival. Now, I will preface this by saying that I've never seen any of Ruben Ostland's body of work. That said, I was very excited for this movie, and I thought Triangle of Sadness was great, but it could have been better. This is a dark comedy with some very funny moments. It is a satire that has the subtlety of a sledgehammer, which means none. And it is very obvious what this film is trying to say and what it's poking fun at. But in my opinion, that is not a bad thing. You know, it is very obvious that Triangle of Sadness criticizes the pretentiousness and entitlement of some rich people, the phoniness and hypocrisy of the lives they live, and just how detached they are from the real world and its problems. Now, I don't want to give anything away because I believe this is a movie where it is better to go in blind. The less you know about Triangle of Sadness, the better. All I will say is that while I really, really love the first two acts of this movie, the third one, not so much. If I'm being honest, all throughout the first act, I thought Triangle of Sadness was going to be one of my favorite movies of the year. Then the second act, it started getting a bit repetitive, but it was still amazing. And the second act includes one of the most insane sequences I've ever seen in film. You guys will know what I'm talking about when you watch the movie. That being said, even though I think the first two acts are really freaking great, the third one, the third one I'm not the biggest fan of. You know, I, I think it starts getting redundant. I think it starts getting repetitive. And I honestly think that towards the end, the film begins to lose steam. That being said... Even though the third act is not as strong as the first two, I do think the first two are so freaking great that I would still say Triangle of Sadness is a great movie. So yeah, if I were to give a score to Triangle of Sadness, I would give it an 8 out of 10, which means I thought it was great. That being said, if the third act would have been stronger, this could honestly be a lot, a lot higher. Now, on the next day of the Vancouver International Film Festival on October 4th, I actually went to a screening of Nosferatu that happened inside a church with live music. And, you know, even though this film sort of doesn't count for what I'm talking about, because, after all, Nosferatu came out a hundred years ago in 1922, I thought this was a great experience and I just thought I needed to share. As I said, we saw this movie inside a church and there was live music by the band Big Kill. And even though I thought the movie was very strange and not at all what I was expecting, I still had fun. <laughs> Now, on the next day of the film festival, which is October 1st, I watched one movie, and that movie is Women Talking. Women Talking is a drama about the women of an isolated religious community who have to decide what to do after discovering that they are being sexually abused by the men in their community. This film was directed by Sarah Pauly, who, by the way, made one of my favorite documentaries of all time, Stories We Tell. Definitely check that out. But in regards to Women Talking, I thought this film was very good. The performances are absolutely amazing, particularly Jesse Buckley, Claire Foy, and Rooney Mara. And the story is very powerful and extremely important. That being said, 
I do have some problems with this movie. And my first problem is the color grading. If I'm being honest, I thought the color grading of this film made it look a bit ugly and distracting. And I can definitely see what they're going for, and I sort of understand why this creative decision was taken, but in my opinion, it really didn't work out that well. Now, the second problem that I have with this film is that I thought it felt a bit anticlimactic. I felt that throughout the entire movie, the film was building up towards something that ultimately never ended up happening. So in my opinion, this film wasn't that satisfying from a narrative perspective. But yeah, in conclusion, if I were to give a score to Women Talking, I would give it a 7 out of 10, which means I thought it was very good. And that is it for part 3 of everything I watched at VIV. Keep an eye out on our YouTube channel for all future episodes or click on this playlist right here.